Välkommen Henrik. Tack. Ja, mitt namn är Henrik Simonsen. Uh, unfortunately our CEO was supposed to be here but he was tied up in business I'm afraid so I hope you can satisfy that I'm presenting the company here today. Uh, Novolution uh, is a Swedish uh, Danish uh, biotech company. We were founded in 2001 so uh, by those measures we can call ourselves a teenager in biotech. Uh, we have transitioned from being a platform company into being a pipeline company and in the December of 2015 we were listed on Nasdaq First North uh, Premier in Stockholm. We have a very um, interesting platform um, that can produce or discover and develop small molecule medicines or tablet based medications uh, that is also very well uh, patent protected. And in terms of uh, that technology, is it only us that thinks that it's interesting? No, we're actually uh, engaged in quite a number of partnerships, as you can, uh, that I will show you. We actually in, uh, uh, have made 15 deals with uh, big farmers over the years. And uh, since we transitioned from being a platform company into a pipeline company, we have built uh, a pipeline in cancer and inflammation uh, within uh, three years and I'm going to describe some of those uh, programs uh, for you. Uh, the promise we set out uh, to investors that um, participated in the IPO in December was that we're going to create five to six business opportunities within 2016, 17 and 18 and we're very confident that we can uh, fulfill that uh, promise. I'll come back to that a little bit later. And then, being a teenager, we have the ambition of be becoming an adult or grown-up. And in, uh, in share market terms, uh, that means that we, uh, we have the ambition of being uplisted to uh, NASDAQ uh, main market. As you can see, several other of these biotech companies have done Hansa Medical, and there are Sanyona and Imunova have similar ambitions of being uplisted. In our case, it requires a little bit more market cap. We have a market capitalization around 450 million Swedish, we probably need double of that before we can uh, take that step. Before I go into describing uh, our platform, uh, I'll just describe to you very shortly how drug discovery is done at uh, Big Pharma today. You may have heard of uh, R&D productivity being a problem with Big Pharma. And the Big Pharmaceutical companies like AstraZeneca, Novartis or Merck, they actually have a challenge to come up with new tablet-based medication. And one of the reasons they have a challenge is that they have quite limited um, uh, libraries of chemicals to start with. Um, they typically have about two to three million compounds in their uh, freezers or where they, 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 they keep them. And that means when you start up a new drug discovery program, you basically have those two to three million compounds that you try to see if they work against the drug target you're looking at. That process is often described as high throughput screening and it's quite effective um, uh, technology that was developed about 15 years ago. Uh, the problem with it, it is that it's not scalable, it's quite slowly and it's quite costly and the success rates uh, are quite low. We have come up with a new promise, or the scientists at Novolution, and what we say is that we can, um, we have a faster process, we have one that has a much lower costs, and it also has a higher success rate. And the reason why we have a higher success rate is because we can create very light, large libraries of small molecules, and that works by what's called combinatorial chemistry. You can see up here, these are small chemicals. Uh, each of these different colors represent a, say, a building block of a chemical. We call it a fragment. And because we can combine these uh, various fragments, uh, we have about 60,000 fragments. If you imagine we take 10,000 fragments and combine them with another 10,000 fragments, combined that will give you 100 million combined molecules that then comprises of two building blocks. Each of these building blocks they have a small uh, barcode, a piece, small piece of DNA, so they are uh, marked, you can say, with this uh, barcode. And that means that we can put them into a very small library, basically this size, where we can keep all the molecules. And the reason we can do that is because they have this 
uh, barcoding that you see here with the DNA. And that is what, what's happening up here. You have a, a chemical on which you put a so-called DNA, piece of DNA. This uh, production of library takes uh, a couple of weeks for uh, one of our scientists to create those uh, libraries. Then if we have, then when we start up a drug discovery program, we look for targets that can be targets in cancer or inflammation. And then we apply um, the library collections of compounds that we have that can be 100 million or 200 uh, million. We put them onto the target to see are there any of the, the molecules we have in, a, in our library that actually bind to the drug target we're looking at. Many of them don't. And that's the typical challenge you have in the industry because 99.999 something will not bind to the drug target. But because we have a larger or better starting point, you can say we will end up with active compounds or so-called hits that are in the tens, the hundreds, or the thousands very often. Not always is it that our technology works. We also have a failure. So it's not to say that our technology is superior to anything else, but it simply means that we have a better chance of finding a drug candidate in the end. So how have we applied this uh, technology? Well, basically, we have had two different uh, business models in the past. And as you can see up here, we have uh, generated about 400 million in revenues in Swedish kronas since basically 2008 uh, until, until this uh, date. Two-thirds of those revenues, as you can see here, have come from what we refer to as technology licensing. That means that we give other companies access to our technology. They do not get access to the library of compounds that we have. Those are proprietary, but they do get access to the technology. And that has meant that we have ended up with agreements with Novartis, as you can see, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, and, and Lexicon Pharmaceuticals. About one-third of our revenues, marked in blue, uh, has come from what we call drug discovery collaborations. That is typically where big farmers, as you can see up here, again, Novartis, Merck or Beringer Ingelheim, the German company, have come to us with targets they have worked with, with their own technology and said, we have to give up, we cannot find any drug targets, can you help us? In many of these cases, we have found initial hits that actually solve the problem. That is one of these programs we have actually with Merck. And this agreement we signed with Janssen in October of last year is a multi-program collaborations, meaning more than one. Um, and um, this has been a very nice re revenue stream, as you can see here. The problem with these agreements is that not a lot of money is included, because typically per drug target, we get less than $1 million in hand, and we get 20 to $30 million in success-based milestone payments. That sounds very nice, but, uh, but once you recognize that it's success-based, and you, if you risk adjust that, it's not a lot of money and you can say, today's net present value. So uh, we think our technology is much, much uh, more, uh, worth much more. So the, uh, the two types of business model we are pursuing right now is the, what you can see in the bottom here, called program licensing, meaning that we mature uh, the um, drug programs into uh, late preclinical, just before you start the clinical trials in humans. And because we work in cancer and inflammation, then the pharmaceutical companies, they are quite interested in making these deals quite early. And this you can see in the uh, chart up here. For deals in cancer and inflammation between 2010 and 2016, where we have the numbers uh, announced from the, uh, the agreements, you can see that maybe up to $10 million is typically given as an upfront payment. So that's nearly tenfold up from the agreements I just described up here. And you can see also that the milestone package is north of $200 million. So again, it's nearly tenfold up compared to uh, the agreements we have made in the past. We have negotiations ongoing here. I'll come back to that in a short while. Another way to make these uh, drug discovery collaboration is to make what we call risk sharing or pre-sale collaboration that means that we go to the pharmaceutical partner and we agree commonly on four to five targets that we want to pursue. 
we do not get money at hand when we sign the agreement, but if we are successful in co the collaboration and these programs mature within one and a half, two or three years, then we can actually look into uh, payments that look like this. So we think these, this type of agreement is much more valuable. And again, we also have uh, negotiations ongoing here. What well, we said in the fourth quarter release, we have a broken fiscal year, so we sent out our fourth quarter report in early September, is that actually we have ongoing negotiations in both categories. So on the lead program, which we refer to as raw gamma T inverse agonist, uh, not an easy name um, to understand what it is, but I will come back to that in a short while. We have negotiations ongoing, um, and we also have negotiations, negotiations and discussions ongoing with several pharmaceutical companies on this risk-sharing uh, pre-sale uh, sort of agreement. And we expect to make one to two of these licensing agreements and one to two of these risk-sharing uh, collaborations within the next uh, nine months. So that's the promise you can say if you invest, if you're a current investor, or if you're a new investor, that's hopefully what will, will trigger some interest in this year. With that, I would like to describe our uh, pipeline, as you can see up here. We have um, developed an interesting pipeline in inflammation. Um, the programs you see up here, and then you can see in oncology, and further back here, we have several programs in, uh, in cancer. The leading program has moved up to what we call the uh, business opportunity stage, the stage where we can uh, try to make uh, or monetize those assets. That is exactly what we are uh, in discussions and negoti negotiations regarding that is the, regarding this program. This program is targeted inflammation, and here you see a, a, a inflammation process that ends up with uh, excretion of a very toxic um, biologic substance called IL-17, and IL-17 has been uh, connected with a number of diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, psoriasis, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, so on and so forth. And already today, we have so-called antibodies, that means biologic medicines, that actually take out different components of this uh, cascade and have shown uh, quite promising results. We have come up with a small molecule that goes into the nucleus of the cell and uh, binds to a receptor that sits on the nucleus of the cell. So in the cell, at the nucleus, there's a receptor called the raw gamma T. And by inhibiting or binding to this receptor, you can get effects that look like inhibiting this one. And what I'm going to show you on the next one. Here you can see two models of um, uh, human disease. The first you can see up here is rheumatoid arthritis, uh, and the other one is called psoriasis. And what you see up here is we give the mice uh, a disease like rheumatoid arthritis. You can see the symptoms uh, gets worse, marked in the gray. If they get the antibody, which I showed you here, this one, you can see over here that symptoms basically do not progress. That's what marked with the, the yellow up here. Our molecule, marked in red, if we give that as a tablet to the mice, they actually have the similar effect, as you can see here. The same is shown in a model of psoriasis uh, in the left-hand corner. We have uh, shown positive results that I just described, both for our lead compound and we have a backup compound. We have also performed uh, safety studies, that is, safety studies in mice, where they're given very high doses of the a molecule to see if it's safe, and it is safe. We need to repeat those studies, and that's what we call um, IND enabling studies. That means that the last animal studies you do before you get allowance from FDA, the or Legemittelsverket, to perform studies in, in humans. So the next steps we are going to do is uh, API production. That means that we do production scale up. So far, we just produce, produce grams of our molecules, we now go into kilogram uh, scale. That's going on right now. And uh, in the first half of next year, we will then conduct these uh, more broadly safety studies that will enable us to go into uh, trials in humans. And that should happen, oops, sorry, should happen in, in mid-2017. 
The rest of the pipeline, we actually had very good results in uh, a program which we called uh, Cytokine X. It's uh, not disclosed what the target is, but here we actually try to mimic uh, a biologic uh, medicine by a small molecule. We will not disclose what it is because it's quite a com competitive field, but that was one of the promises we had at the IPO, that we were going to, to make proof of concept, and we actually reached that in the fourth quarter. That means that we have shown in animals that it actually works as well as a biologic uh, molecule. And then we have some other programs ongoing that will report results in the next uh, quarter. In terms of uh, financials, you can see a um, four-year history of our financials. As you can see, we've had revenues between 15 and um, 80 million going up somewhat, but that really depends on the years where we have uh, the big uh, payments from, um, from our partners. And back in 2013-14, you can see here, we had uh, booked nearly 80 million in uh, revenues, meaning in that year we actually uh, were more or less uh, break even. And that's what we expect going forward. There will be years when we have large upfront payments that we will become very close to, to break even. We have a so-called burn rate, how much money we spend per year, and that is in the magnitude of 90 million Swedish kroners. It may go up a little bit, but I don't think it will go much uh, beyond um, 90 to 100 million Swedish. So that means we have about two years uh, of a runway. We have net cash of 200 million Swedish by the end of uh, June. Um, so we definitely think we are well funded with, with the money we got from the IPO back in December. So lastly, I hope I have convinced you we have an interesting technology. We have um, shown that we can work with big farmers. We can uh, generate revenues at the same time as we develop our pipeline. And um, we have built an interesting pipeline in cancer and inflammation. And within the next nine months, we expect to do one to two licensing agreements and one to two of these risk sharing pre-sale agreements. So that is what we are working hard on. And we are confident that we can make one to two of these in each of these categories within the next nine months. That was... Okay. Stort tack, Henrik. Tack så Kommer över och sitter här. Ja. Varsågod. Nu har vi gått igenom en transformation nu. Det är en sak som du inte nämnde, det var ju ändå er, er ägarbild. Ni ja. har ju, du kanske skulle utveckla det lite grann, för det, ni har ju väldigt bra ägare med er. Ja, vi har, alltså en av orsakerna till att vi, vi, vi äh, låter oss notera på äh, Svenska Börsen, kan du säga, eller först Norge, var det att vi har äh, väldigt starka äh, investerare i äh, SEB Venture Capital- vi har en annan stiftelse, SAP utvecklingsstiftelse och sen har vi industrifonden som också som kom med som investerare i 2012. Och det var väl de som lite grann bytte strategi, alltså i och med att industrifonden kom in så det bytte ja. strategi från att vara ett jag vet inte vad man ska kalla det, testlaboratorium för en big pharma till att själv börja utveckla. Ja, Visst alltså, är det så? De, de kom ju in och sa att vi kan se att ni har jobbat med ett stora pharma läkemedelsföretag och det har haft en, en bra succé. Varför gör vi inte det att vi mognar våra egna projekt och då försöker utlicensera dem? Och det är precis det vi har gjort inom de sista tre åren. Så vi fick in tror jag, 60 miljoner svenska när industrifonden kom in som var liksom huvudinvesterare på den tiden. Och sen har vi också en tredje stor fond som heter Sunstone som är svensk-dansk venturekapital. Men vi har också fått med vid, vid Uh, IPO uh, LMK Industri. Det är aktieägarna kan du väl säga. Mm. Som också finns i Nigeria Skåne då. Ja, precis. Uh, kan du, för, för nu har ju aktiekursen gått ner lite grann. Ni kom, ja, vad var introduktionskursen? Var det? Uh, 17,5. 17,5. Ja. Uh, vi har ju bevakning på Yard Security som jag kommer från. Vi gör uppdragsanalyser för aktiespararnas räkning och vi följer bolaget. Vi har köpt rekommendation på bolaget. Vi har inte sett att det har hänt något som motiverar kursnedgången. Vi gillar bolaget. Så vi kanske kan utveckla lite grann vad, vad du själv tänker. Du kanske inte är intresserad av aktiekurser på andra sidan. Ja, klart, så klart är vi det. Ja. <laughs> vi är ju ledsna över det att, att, att vi har fått den här kursen, den negativa initiala kursreaktionen ja. som vi har fått. Men, men alltså det, det vi vill säga är att vi har 
fått in de här 250 miljoner svenska kronor som vi tog in med börsnotering. Det var precis det vi sökte och, och få. För det betyder nu att vi kan utveckla bolaget över de nästa tre åren. Och som jag ser vad som har hänt under de första säg, ni månaderna som har gått från IPO är precis att de projekten vi jobbar med har mognat. Vi sa ju vid IPO... Finns, att... finns det någonting som ni inte har uppfyllt vad gäller de här? Nej. Tar... Nej. Nej. Ni är på plan. Vi är på plan, ja. Och det, det är därför vi sa vid IPO att inom, inom de nästa 12 till 18 månader kommer vi göra en till två av de här risk sharing um, avtalen och en till två av de här utlicenseringsprogrammen. Och, och det är det vi säger att vi är på den uh, tracken vi kommer att göra dem nu inom de nästa ni månader åtminstone. Vad finns det inom tre till sex månader? Vad, vad, är det, vad är det som kan hända då? Det kan också hända inom sex månader. Ja. Det kan hända inom tre månader. Det, vi vi det vill bara säga att liksom, ja. inom ni månader kommer det då, om det inte hända. Det är också att du ska alltid prata med den andra. Det att, eller att du har två parter kan du säga. Så vi har liksom vår del klar, men du ska ju alltid ha den. Vi har tyckt en annan part om det, men det går bra. Jag tycker som det, som det går här. Men förstår jag att i er 17 det är något som ni själva har utvecklat utifrån er kunskap och som ni har tagit fram till TOX, där vi innebär att ni testar om det, om det, inte, om det är säkert ja. och sen ska ni ta vidare till egentligen fas 1-studien då? Ja. Under alltså, vi, vi är klara att göra en fas 1-studie om vi kommer att lyckas med de här djurstudierna, de extra TOX-studierna men, mm. men vi har ju redan gjort ett studie som visar att det är ingen problem att den, den är inte toxisk så vi, är, vi tror heller inte att vi kommer någon problem i nästa studien. Nej. Så, om, så i mitten på 70 skulle vi vara klar, skulle jag tro. Och uppskalningen verkar inte vara heller något problem i att gå, gå från gram till kilo och Nej, liknande. Precis. För det är, ändå, det är ju... Ja, precis. Så, så frågan är liksom... Men det, det är två big farman ni, ni förhandlar med nu. Förstod jag rätt då? Om det är... Om det är två big farman ni förhandlar med nu om... EL- att alltså det är stora 17. lägemedelsföretag, ja. vill jag säga. Så du ska som är redan i det här segmentet och är på ja. psoriasis och reumatism det är klart att fokus att finna en partner som, som jobbar inom inflammation, alltså inom psoriasis och de, de sjukdomsområdena det är klart den fokus vi har det måste jag fråga en sak för nu har, du pratat, ja. nu har du pratat i fem minuter tycker publiken om att han ska prata engelska nästa gång när för, eller ska han prata svenska när han håller sitt föredrag vad föredrar ni? svenska du har en jättebra svenska. Det får jag väl lite mer. Ja. <laughs> Nej, men det, det funkar jättebra tycker jag. Okay. Att det, och det, det är så publiken är svensk och åren är svensk. Såklart. Sen kan vi ta och på engelska och fråga på engelska en annan gång. Men, men vad ligger i, i för andra förutom grammatism? Och, 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 jag är lite nyfiken på det för område som ni håller på med. Vad heter den? Den heter Sutterkin. Men det, du kan inte ens säga vilket, vilket uh, treatment... Mm, alltså det ligger inom samma område som vi jobbar. Inflammation. Ja, så inflammation. Och det, det vill säga, vad heter det på svensk? Ledgift. Inflammation. Ja, ja, men om du säger reumatid och trit. Det, det, det är reumatism. Reumatism. Och psoriasis. Psoriasis, de sjukdomarna. Men också de som har inflammatoriska sjukdomar i, i är det magen eller i tarmen. Mm. Det, det, det heter det på svensk. Inflammatory bowel disease eh, som ofta drabbar kvinnor i 30-40 års allan. Som var din, eh... Vad heter det? Ja, det heter så. Det heter så, okej. Okay. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> det är en inflammatorisk, ofta, ofta betecknad som autoimmun sjukdom. Vår kroppen attackerar sig själv, kan du säga. Mm. Och det är därför du får den reumatism eller psoriasis eller vad det nu är. Kan du säga någonting om unikiteten jämfört med andra bolag? För att det, det, jag har inte sett något liknande bolag, men, men det kanske finns. Så att det liksom, kan du beskriva lite konkurrenssituationen? Alltså, te- teknologin som vi har är ju ganska unik. För vi vet ju om att AstraZeneca, som ni också vet om, har ju tagit ner forskning och utvecklingsfaciliteter här i Sverige. Och har byggt nya faciliteter i England. Och de sa ju precis sista året att de kommer att bygga en så ny stor forskningsenhet eller screeningsfacilitet som har två miljoner compounds. För varje 
øh, sygdomstarget eller drug target, øh, som der kommer at teste, de kan anvende 2 millioner compounds. Og det, og det, det her er jo ligesom, hvad kan man sige, lotterien. Altså når du har 2 millioner, så har du 2 millioner chancer. Mm. Når du har 1 milliard eller 100 millioner, så har du bare du må, du må. En, en bedre chance. Det, det, det vil endda sige, at du har en vinder. Sådan er det jo endda, sådan er det heller i lotteriet, men du har jo mindst en bedre chance for at komme op med en, en Du har 2 millioner i Nihag. Vi har op til 1 milliard. Milliard. Og vi skaber jo hele tiden nye biblioteker, altså nye måle-biblioteker. Hvor, er, det, er det bare sammensætning af små fragment, som gør, at det bliver multiple effekter, som ni får? For jeg tittade en gång i tiden på, på Astra. De, de köpte ju väldigt mycket Brisbane, om jag inte du kommer ihåg det. Men de, de köpte ju väldigt mycket patent ifrån eh, barriärrevet där och ifrån, för att kunna få compounds. Liksom. Men, men jag, tror, jag tror du kan se det på det sättet att, att många av de stora läkemedelsföretag, inklusive AstraZeneca, jamen, de har ju inte gjort stora vad kan man säga, nya business inom small molecules eller tablet. De har ju köpt många av de bolag som ligger inom biologisk medicin. De köpte, tror jag, var det för 15 miljarder, de köpte Medimmune som mm. tog Astra in i det där heter antikroppsbehandling. Det har ju också många här i Norden som finns notering av heter alligator bioscience. Vi har Genmap i, i Danmark som jobbar precis med antikropper. Men det findes, vi tykker jo, at der findes et jättestort behov for tabletbaseret med, øh, behandling. Og antikropperne kan jo ikke løse alle problemer. De kommer, tager sig jo ikke ind i, i inden, hvad er det, inden i cellerne. Mm. Øh, det kan en antikrop ikke gøre. Der, der måske du har et, 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 et lille Så kemisk stof, ja. Ja, jeg forstår. som kan gøre det, eller er der løsning. Mm. Skal vi tage nogle frågor fra publikken? Har du något samarbete uh, nej, med... Jag måste upprepa frågan. Har du no- något samarbete med no- någon uh, Nej, det har vi inte. Vi hade ett samarbete i 2003-2004 när de jobbade med uh, tablettbaserad medicin. Men de har ju lämnat precis tablettbaserad medicin. Så vi har ingen, ingen avtal med dem. Ja, vi, vi har uh, den sidste aftale, vi gjorde i oktober sidste år, det var med uh, Johnson Johnson, eller et, uh, et databolag, som hedder Janssen Biotech. Så, jo, det gør vi. Og vi har også jobbet med Merck og, uh, og andre bolag. Vi kan tage en sidste fråge, om det finns någon. Det gjorde vi inte. Stort tak, Henrik. Lykke tak. til. Tak. Anders.